And we have a super fun video for you today. It's, I guess, our quote unquote Christmas special, would you say? <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! Definitely. We've got a, a nice list of Christmas movies that we love to watch each year. Um, but we also have exciting news to share in this video, too. So, are you sharing it now or later? Uh, I was gonna do it right now. Let's do it right now, then. Because I want to get it off my chest. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right. So, do you remember in one of the last update videos that Brett did about how we have something going on mm -hmm. that's been taking up a lot of time? Yeah. Well, you've guessed it. We are expecting a baby. We are. In March. In March. It's coming up. Yeah. I mean, so, it's like not even three months away. Yeah. It's really, really approaching pretty quickly, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why... I've been kind of MIA is because I've just been like struggling with a lot of sickness and haven't really been feeling myself. It's pregnancy. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so I can do it. <laughs> so he's been kind of carrying love bats all by himself. So I very much appreciate that because I still love this so much and I don't want it to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I really have a lot of fun making these videos. So I do too. It's a, uh, but yeah. Life gets really tough sometimes and busy and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of times where I'm like, I don't feel like doing videos. And yeah. So, but I mean, we at least wanted to do kind of like a Christmas type special mm -hmm. for all like our dog is drinking more out of their bowl. They love to do this when we do videos. They always love to make noise whenever we're talking to a camera, mm -hmm. but um yeah, I, like I was doing some holiday horror stuff, but especially we love watching a lot of tons of Christmas movies around the holidays. Mm -hmm. And we thought like with this Christmas special kind of do a little bit of a things we like to watch. So some of these are going to be obvious picks that like everyone watches and some you may not have heard of, may want to check out. And some are just a little odd, maybe spooky. Mm -hmm. I like the spooky. So. Yeah, it, it's it's nice because like sometimes we're in the mood for just like a classic like feel good like family Christmas movie and those are the ones that we're saying like are kind of obvious at times mm -hmm. and then like we've kind of trickled in a couple of more spooky Christmas horror movies that are so good like there's quite a few out there that I don't really know much about or like I just look at and I'm like I'm not watching that it looks like trash mm -hmm. but then there's some that like are really really good so hopefully you enjoy our list that we've put together and it'll help you the remainder of the holiday season to find some good stuff to watch for sure and um yeah i mean most of what i listed off in the beginning are like obvious picks like if you are a follower of this channel you know we love spooky stuff so obviously nightmare before christmas mm -hmm. is gonna be one of our picks and we watched that maybe a couple weeks ago yeah, we didn't watch the whole thing yeah, because we were going to sleep. But Yeah, we're old people and I fall asleep really fast. Yeah, but he was singing the songs. That was. Every word. Yeah. But that's like a Halloween movie that we can get away with watching. At Christmas, Christmas time as well. too. Yeah, it's, so. people say it's both. Some people argue between Halloween and Christmas. What do you think? I think it's a Halloween movie because okay. it's about a guy, a, you know, Jack Skellington is a guy who has just... A Halloween guy who has a love affair with Christmas mm -hmm. and then he realizes at the end he's like you know what I'm the spooky guy you know and I, I'm gonna own it mm -hmm. so he's Definitely like I'll leave, I'll, I'll leave Christmas to Santa Claus and uh, yeah yeah so um, you know that's an obvious pick I really can't say a whole lot on it besides it's fun it's yeah. enjoyable for everyone mm -hmm. Um, there's like Home Alone 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. um, I love the first Home Alone just because of the character of Marley, the old man. And oh, he's yeah. known as like the shovel slayer and everyone's scared of him, and including that, Kevin McAllister. Is that really what he's called, the shovel slayer? It's like, I forget the full name, but like oh. Buzz, the um, Kevin's brother, is like, he, it's like he's the shovel slayer. He would kill people with a shovel and then like, you know, like put salt, like... They would you would salt all their bodies in trash <laughs> cans or whatever. Yeah. And you know, obviously the end of the movie where, you know, he has the conversation with old man Marley in the church and you know, he's like you know, he seems scary, but he's just really nice. Mm -hmm. He's and, so cute. Yeah, I love that part of the movie. That's mm -hmm. like my favorite part of the Home Alone. Yeah. And uh 
But yeah, second one is, it's got Tim Curry in it. So that's definitely a plus, but it is really stupid. Mm -hmm. Like I remember watching the majority. I think I got like three fourths of the way in. And then I was like, all right, this is like just kind of ridiculous. It's not bad though. It, it's everything the first one is, but like they amplify it up like a hundred times mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, the, obviously the part where he's throwing like bricks off the top of a building and it's hitting Marv right in the face. Yeah. It's like, you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> you're dead. Yeah. But I don't know. It's fun. Yeah. Um, then we, uh, uh -huh. like Christmas Story, obviously it's an obvious pick, but we did watch the new one that just came out, A Christmas, Christmas Story Christmas. Mm -hmm. And we were going into it thinking it was not going to be great. Yeah, our expectations were low. Were very low. Yeah. But um, I kind of enjoyed it. Like, yeah. I don't know. I thought it was fine. I was pleasantly surprised. I even cried a little bit. But you I cried cry at everything. You cried a lot of movies. So, whatever. But it was just like the story of. And if you've seen like news or the trailer about it, then you know. It's just the story of Ralphie as a father creating Christmas for his children, just like his dad did. Yeah. And so it's a good story. They did a good job with it. I think, yeah, what they, I mean, it was a lot of like, you know, hearts that are trying to just be nostalgic and stuff, but it wasn't. Maybe not, I guess. Yeah, I don't. I didn't really get beat over the head with it to me. And I know there's a lot of like reboot and sequel movies that come out and I'm just like, oh my God, overkill. Just, yeah. Just try something new with it or mm -hmm. whatever. And, but uh, yeah, um, Christmas Story Christmas I actually enjoyed and like, I mean, I wouldn't say I would go back to it a lot, but maybe like next year I would probably watch it. I agree. I would, I mean, I'm not gonna. This I'd keeps watch... falling off me. Okay. <laughs> I've watched Christmas Story so many times that at this point, like I don't really sit down to watch that unless it's like Christmas Day because it's on the on the on the computer. On oh the computer. God. It's on TV. Oh, you're. Sorry, I'm trying to get Tilly to come up here. Hey, Tilly, <laughs> you want to say hi? Yeah, she was whining. Say hello. What were you saying about the computer? <sighs> Stop it. <laughs> You know how Christmas Story is played for 24 hours on Christmas? Yeah, it... it if it, you have cable. It basically is just like background noise. Mm -hmm, exactly. And then you just like catch different moments all throughout the day. Because we usually do have it on, at least at my house. Mm -hmm. So, um, the next one on our list is like one of my favorites. And I went so long without seeing this movie. You really did. Probably. I watched part of it when I was like right out of high school because my brother was like, how have you not seen this? But we're talking about Christmas Vacation. Mm -hmm. um, and then whenever I got with Brett, his family loves this movie. So now I've seen it a lot more and I, it makes me laugh so much. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, you love the opening um, credits of the, the oh, yeah. song, the, dun, dun, the song dun, dun, Christmas dun, dun. Vacation. Yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh, it's a so lot of good. Fun. Yeah. So if you have not seen that, it's okay. Don't feel bad, but you should check it out. I'm surprised. Like, I know some people that just don't like. Yeah, they think it's annoying. They think it's annoying, but Obnoxious. I think I think it's hilarious. Look how sweet she is. She's so cute. You need a bath too. You stinky. She's stinky. Oh, stinky dog. I, mean, I should put the Santa hat on her. No, then it'll smell forever. That's true. What's um, next? Next is a terrible movie that I love. Oh! Yeah. And because we moved, we can't find it. Yeah, I was trying to find it and like, cause I, you bought this for me last yeah. year because it, like- It was in your stocking, It right? was in my stocking. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yes, finally, I can just watch it anytime. Like I have this whole gripe with streaming services now because it's like, everyone's like, oh, what streaming services mm -hmm. is on? I'm like, there's 18 million streaming services. Just go buy the DVD or whatever. Seriously, I got this at the Dollar General for like three dollars. Christmas with the Cranks is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So horrible movie. It's but terrible. We love it. Yeah, I like it. It's yeah, fun. it's just funny. It's so dumb. It's funny. It's. I don't even really have much else to say about it. It's easy to watch. Just, I mean, it's a neat concept. You know, uh, you know, a husband and wife. Their daughter goes off to college, like in another country. Um, or like goes she gets engaged or something yeah it's like she goes to the peace corps and then I like forget. you know they decide like hey why don't we just skip christmas because we just spend our entire life savings on christmas every year and then 
it's them just trying to get through it um, of, of avoiding people and buying things and you know <clears throat> all these crazy antics and then then you know obviously most of the plot you can guess it's like oh of course the daughter decides to come home for Christmas so that they gotta they gotta you know <clears throat> pretend that nothing wrong happened and right I don't know it's it's easy to watch it's yeah. fun yeah it's just silly yeah ooh Next one's one of my favorites because mm -hmm. of how mean spirited it is. Of course, you love it then. <laughs> yeah, but it is a fun horror movie, and that is Krampus. Krampus. Yeah, and so it was funny um, how you were talking earlier about like movies that are just like look terrible, and Krampus is one that there's like all these spin-off, like knockoff movies. Right. Like if you go to like your gas station or Walmart and like the $5 bin, mm -hmm. there's like these like Krampus movies. Yeah. But they're not the Krampus from 2015 that has like Adam Scott and Tony mm -hmm. Collette. But that one's really funny. And it, I just think it's fun. It's just, you know, if you like Gremlins and you haven't watched Krampus, you pretty much will love it. Mm -hmm. um, and I like what you said the other day about just like, we had it on briefly and you said something about just like loving the way that it looks. Yeah, it looks great. And the sound design. Or like, the, that's what it was. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like there's a part like in the beginning of the movie where you first see like Krampus at like a distance and he's like just jumping from house to house mm -hmm. like after one of the characters and like it you hear like the chains rattling and like everything just the sound design is like so like perfect like mm -hmm. perfectly spot on you'd be like that's what that would sound like yeah and i don't know but it's i have a blast with it yeah. i love watching it and it does I, not get old i tell everyone to watch it and they're like oh no that's too scary for me i'm like um i'm sorry pg-13 like, killer gingerbread cookies like yeah, you'll be okay yeah you'll be all right yeah. it's not that scary yeah but krampus is pretty creepy looking his face they did a good job with that imagery yeah he looks awesome he does and the grandma. The grandma is like my favorite character. She is our favorite. Yeah. Her relationship with the youngest boy mm -hmm. is so cute. Yeah. And she like only speaks in German mm -hmm. until like a certain part of the movie. And then mm -hmm. everyone's like, why is this thing after us? And then she explains it. And all of a sudden she starts speaking English. She's like, the grandma's like, what? She can speak? No, like the aunt was yeah. like, she can speak English this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Now I really want to watch it again. Yeah. Um, okay, back to another kind of classic movie that maybe you wouldn't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Expect us to suggest, but mm -hmm. the holiday. And that's a big asterisk next to it. At least for me, it's like, I do like Jude Law. Oh. I cannot stand Cameron Diaz's character in mm -hmm. this movie. Yeah. And their relationship is whatever, but Jude Law is so charming as it is that it's like, okay, I'll put up with it. Mm -hmm. But it's Jack Black and Kate Winslet's like friendship that I enjoy a lot yeah. more in this movie. There's rumors that there's a second one coming out, but Cameron Diaz like tweeted or something and was like, um, that's not true. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's funny. not happening. That is funny. Yeah. But yeah, it's like these two big storylines that just kind of jump back and forth and um, the Jack Black and Kate Winslet storyline I like because mm -hmm. they kind of are just like spark up a friendship and, you know, they both have had relationship issues and um, Kate Winslet ends up um, like running into this old man and like befriending him and finds mm -hmm. out he was like this old filmmaker and uh, screenwriter and... I don't know, why do I like old people in movies so because much? Because they're so like calm and wise and I think that you just like that. Yeah, I do. That characteristic. Yeah, but yeah, it's a it's an enjoyable movie. I think most people get some enjoyment out of mm -hmm. the holiday. Yeah. Um, I told you about this one. Have um, not seen this one. Yeah, I told you about this because I watched it the other day. Um, but 8-Bit Christmas is actually a lot of fun. Um, if you are in any extent a nerd, you might have an appreciation for this movie. And um, it's about Neil Patrick Harris, um, him and his daughter like go to um, his grandma's house and he shows her, you know, his old Nintendo entertainment system. And then he's like, I'm gonna tell you how I ended up getting this or whatever. And most of the movie is just him as, he's telling a story of him as a kid trying to desperately get a Nintendo for Christmas. 
And I know some people will probably watch this and, you know, especially how things resolve, they may not like the way it resolves, but I thought it was very realistic of how it resolves. And people were like, oh, isn't that like not the point of the movie or whatever? And I was like, no, I mean, I kind of kind of get it, but I won't spoil that. But mm -hmm. there is a I lot know. of there's a lot of stuff um, because this takes place in the 80s and there's a lot of like funny like 80s little references. I don't think I told you about this, but there's mm -hmm. one part where he was talking about how him and his dad were like he would help his dad because he was like um, like a handyman always doing like stuff around the house and then. Um, his daughter would like pop in like during the dialogue in the scene and be like, you were wearing safety goggles, right? And he was like, oh, oh yeah, well, close enough. And then it showed like a paper bag over his head or whatever. <laughs> and like when he was talking about his dad, like his dad would walk around and be like, oh, God bless it, which you kind of know what he was actually saying. <laughs> and I don't know. Yeah. I just thought that was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. And yeah. It's a it's a fun movie. It's enjoyable. If you are a nerd and like growing up I loved Nintendo stuff and video games and so I mean I didn't really. I had a PlayStation 2 and played like three games, but I still feel like I would enjoy the movie. You would, because it's just about like, you know, how much you really love something that you'll just go to the ends of the earth, try to get it. Yeah. And but it's funny and just him and like all of his friends are are funny. But yeah, and so it's, it's a little bit of a different spin rather than just, you know, all your typical other Christmas movies. Love story yeah. type family reunion things. Mm -hmm. So it's something different. I do appreciate that about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Black Christmas is up next. So I did a holiday horror episode on the 70s Black Christmas. Which you should check out. It's really good. Um, and yeah, go, just go watch that and I'll leave it at that. It's a really good... Um, old slasher movie mm -hmm. that's worth your time mm -hmm. and then um, you actually introduced me to the Black Christmas remake from I think it was like 2006 or something something like that yeah and yeah I get some enjoyment out of that what when I watched that how old was I in 2006 I don't even know I can't count right now but I think you were probably like middle school yeah something like that um I was terrified of that movie. <laughs> I watched it in theaters with my best friend and my mom, and I just remember like sorry. being so scared. She's, and then, sorry. she all right? She's just a baby. She's a baby. Go on, go on. Um, I was so scared, sorry, I forgot where I was. And then like, as I got older and started really liking like the original movies of, of stories and, and checking those out, I actually think I definitely prefer the original. Oh, the original Black Christmas. Yeah. Wasn't it remade again, though? They remade it a couple years ago. I but haven't seen that. Yeah, I had heard nothing but negative things, okay. so I was like, all right, I'll just, I just skip it. don't really think that's necessary. No. I mean, there are movies that have, like, multiple remakes. But, but like, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, I mean, like, the mid-2000s, it's like, I know some stuff doesn't age that well, but, like, there's, there's stuff from, like, you know, the 90s that have aged just fine. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, if you want something more along the lines of like silly for, I guess, like teenager stuff, it would be the Black Christmas remake from like 2006. Right. But the original is very good. Mm -hmm. So. I agree with that. Oh, the next up is one I like and I forced you to go to the theater. And I think me. I was like. Yeah, you were, you didn't like it very much. But. I can see why you appreciate it, so yeah. why don't you go ahead? Yeah, so there have been endless amounts of uh, renditions of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Mm -hmm. and But this one has a slightly cool spin on it, and that is a movie called The Man Who Invented Christmas. And that has Dan Stevens in it. And this movie is pretty much, he plays Charles Dickens, the author, and it's kind of like a spin on how he came up with the idea of A Christmas mm -hmm. Carol. And like, it's definitely not factual and historically accurate, but it is like he was under a lot of pressure of, you know, making a, a kind of a hit book mm -hmm. in a way. 
and he wrote A Christmas Carol in a very short amount of time. And most of the movie is him, just the stresses of him dealing with his family, his dad, and like trying to get a hit and, you know, to make everything okay, like financially for them, because his last number of books were like complete flops. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he funded everything himself. And so most of the movie is like, he sees the, the characters basically in his mind and then they just like come to life. Like he thinks of like, he's like, I need someone who's just like super like selfish and only cares about money and blah, blah, blah. And then he thinks like Scrooge and then Scrooge would just appear in front of him and then he would just bounce ideas off of that and whatever. And yeah, that part of the movie I do agree is cool. Yeah, so it, of course it plays out like how you know the story of A Christmas Carol to go, but just from the perspective of the author. And, but I find a lot of enjoyment in that movie and mm -hmm. how it kind of came to be how important that story was to a lot of people at that time and how it made people a lot more generous and, you know, giving around the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. So it's one I really enjoy. So you may not have heard of it, but check it out. You might like it. Yeah. This Carol, I was just trying to think about um, what time frame Carol is set in, because that's kind of important. It's the 50s. The 50s? I think. So it's a, a love story-ish about um, two women who fall in love, and one of them is significantly older mm -hmm. than the other. Yep. Um, and it is a little bit sad. Uh, I will say, so just expect that. Yeah, but it is. I, it's a. I like it though. Yeah, it's such it, a calming movie. It is so calming to watch, and I don't know. I remember seeing it for the first time in theaters, and just kind of being like, really like, I felt like I was like in the film. Mm -hmm. I just like felt like I was there with them, going through the experience of like being a lesbian couple in the 50s and mm -hmm. going through that experience but it's set at christmas time and it's snowy and there's christmas hats and what the younger girl from the relationship works in like a retail store of some sort yeah that's kind of how they meet that's it. how they meet yeah. yeah like um yeah it has some um, kate blanchett and rooney mara in it. Oh, and oh i love both of them yeah they're both Thanks great for saying that. they're both great and yeah something just the tone of the movie and like when you just see, when you see the cover, you wouldn't think like, oh, this is a Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. But the entire, throughout the whole movie, the whole atmosphere and everything is set around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why we put it on the list. And plus it's just a good movie. Yeah, watch. it's actually based off of a book called, I think it's called The Price of Salt, which I actually listened to like the audio book after seeing the movie and it was really good. It was, it was on YouTube. Oh, That's nice. where I listened to it, but um. Yeah, because you, you introduced me to Carol. You yeah. were like, "We should watch that," and then I was really bored one day, and I was like, "Can I please watch it?" And you're like, "Okay, fine." Yeah. yeah. So we should watch that together because I don't think I ever watched it last year. I don't think you did. Yeah, and like, just so you know, all of these movies are movies that we try to like watch every year. I would say most of them. Yeah, there's. So we start like in November. It's tough. It's tough to get yeah. all of them in. Yeah, but they're so casual that it's like if you don't finish it. Like last night, something came up and we didn't finish the Christmas movie we were watching, but we've seen it a bunch. So. Yeah, we've seen it, so it doesn't it's matter. It's all good. Yeah. But anyway, that's all I really have to say. Yeah. Love um, that. Next up is The Family Stone. Family Stone is a movie that is in definitely my family. Mm -hmm. um, this is a movie that... Yeah, when you see the cover, you wouldn't, you necessarily wouldn't think it's a Christmas movie, but it is. Um, but it's just about how one of members of this family meets this girl, brings her mm -hmm. to his family, and just how much she does not fit in with them, and she's terrified. And it kind of goes from there. And it yes. has to do with, like, you know, a wedding ring and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it has a all-star cast, basically. And it's surprising, like, how many like big names are in this movie like um diane keaton craig t nelson um rachel mcadams sarah jessica parker um luke wilson like a lot of people mm -hmm. are in this movie and rachel adams is my favorite yeah she's her character is my favorite too because she's she's just a sister that's just like i don't know <laughs> she's like obnoxious her but attitude. she's her attitude she just like hates everyone <laughs> and i love that yeah and uh but 
it is, I, I know some people will probably watch the Family Stone and not think it's that great. It's, it is pretty awkward in moments. Like where, I don't know, there's just really odd moments of the movie where it's like, it's not uncomfortable, but you just feel like the cast, I don't know, just the, the writing or. Hmm, I, I didn't really pick up on that. To me, like but, the the writing was just so weird in moments where it's like I feel like the actors are like, all right, I'm gonna try and do the best with this, <laughs> but I don't n really know where to go, mm -hmm. and it that's how it felt to me. Like, and almost every time I watch it, I feel that way in some aspect. Huh, you should point that out to me next time we watch it. I will. Because I haven't, I never saw this movie until I started being with Brett. Gosh, how many times do I say that? Yeah, but you've introduced me to some stuff too. Yeah, but uh, it's great. I love this movie. Yeah, it's... I don't I mean, hear many people talk about it. So. Yeah, not a lot of people talk about it. Um, but, yeah, it's one that you could check out. You may like it, you may not. You know. She's nose tucked into my arm right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting up straight, but nose tucked. Like She always wants to... Like, she always pretends to be comfortable. Are even we when she's not. talking about you? We're talking about you. Yeah. Aww. Um, next up is a great one, Gremlins. Um, if you haven't seen Gremlins and you like spooky stuff, but you don't like stuff that goes too violent or scary, then you'll still like Gremlins. Definitely. Um, I enjoy the heck out of Gremlins. And, I've been watching that since I was a kid. Yeah. And people, I remember getting in, someone asked, like, I had to settle a debate for someone. I forget who, but they're like, isn't Gremlins a Christmas movie? I'm like, um... The opening credits literally is the song Christmas Baby Please Come Home. The entire thing is around Christmas Eve. Like, there's snow everywhere. There's Christmas decorations there's everywhere. There's lights. There's a scene where Gizmo, the gremlin, puts a little Christmas hat on. Yeah, it's like... It's like all tank It's like tangled up in the lights or something. Yeah, it's like if you've seen Gremlins once, you know whether it's a Christmas yeah. movie. And Speaking of Gizmo, I had a guinea pig when I was a little girl named Gizmo. That's, That's my favorite name for a pet ever. It is a good name. Okay. Next up is one that you... <laughs> okay. <s> Sorry. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> funny. Sorry, go ahead. But next up is one that you... I still need to show you. Don't judge me. No. No, actually a, a lot of people have not actually fully seen this movie. But it's it's a wonderful life. Yeah. And... I do really want to watch it. Um, it is really good. It is one that's not a casual, like, you can just put it on any time. You gotta pay attention. Yeah, it's one that's, like, it's worth paying attention to. Right, and isn't it kind of long? It is pretty long. It's, yeah. like, a little over two hours. It's, like, two hours and ten minutes. But it has aspects, it has, like, beats of the story of A Christmas Carol. But, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's... It's really quotable. A lot of people say the one, um, that one, what's the one mine? Every until, time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, so it's like, if you're wondering where that's from, it's from this movie. Yeah. Um, but it is a remember, real... Remember I thought that was like really dark? Yeah, you thought it was like it's about like, someone passing away yeah. or whatever. It's like, it's from It's a Wonderful Life. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's very good. Um, and if you haven't watched it, definitely, you know, just sit down, throw your phone across the room and just don't pay attention to the outside world and just watch It's a Wonderful Life. It's, a, it's extremely enjoyable. Some good advice there. Yeah. Next up is one Kelly loves and actually we both discovered together. And this is one I don't want to talk about yeah, really at all me either. because I think everyone should just go watch it. And the less you know, the better. Okay. You, I'm glad you said that. And I'm not going to say anything, yeah. but better it's a movie called out. better watch out. And it was made in like 2016. Just go watch it. Like, don't watch a trailer. Like, don't read about it. Just go watch it. But it's if you gonna... like, if you like spooky or like a th good thriller, mm -hmm. this will satisfy you. And yeah. we just watched it on a whim one day, and we were like, "I'm so glad we didn't know a thing about this mm -hmm. movie. It's awesome." Yeah, I was definitely like, "Whoa!" Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. So yeah. that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, go watch. Better watch out. Yeah, I really like that one. Um, I also really like the next one, which you showed me. It's on Shutter. 
Yeah, we watched it we, together. Well, we for watched the first it together, time. but you were like, you found it, and you're like, this sounds pretty good. It sounded cool, yeah. It's called the Advent Calendar. Mm -hmm. So if you have Shutter, I think that's the only place you can stream it. It, it wasn't exclusive because it? it went on it last year. I don't know if they put it on any other streaming service. Okay, but it's about an Advent Calendar, <laughs> and yep. uh, every time you open one of the doors for the countdown of Christmas some stuff happens. Yeah, it like starts off like where she would just like open one of them and be like, oh, there's a piece of candy and she would eat the candy in it. But like every day there was something weird that would happen to this girl. Yeah. And she was like a paraplegic, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, but um, it's think, really, go ahead. Didn't her dad pass away? I forget how she got, like how she acquired the yeah, advent calendar. calendar, her friend. Yeah. Her friend bought it for her and came to visit her because she was like down. I think her dad died or something. Yeah, her dad like passed away or whatever. Whatever, that could be wrong, but. but yeah, it's like every time like she opens it for a new day, like there's something weird that goes on, mm -hmm. but it's really well paced and mm -hmm. I just remember really enjoying it. And we should watch that because I don't remember a ton of stuff that happens, but yeah. I just remember that like, it's one of those movies where it doesn't hit a certain point and you're like, oh, this is stupid. Right. Like it was just solid all the way throughout. Mm -hmm. And I remember liking how it wraps up and so. I, yeah, I don't remember how it did, but I know it was good. It's a lot of movies they remember, so. Yeah, um, but that's real quick, one more thing. Yeah. That's another one of those like, like finally something different for like a horror, Christmas movie like it's just like a different plot that isn't exactly the same as every other movie you've ever seen I just appreciate that it also wasn't just like super violent for the sake mm -hmm. of violence either no like, like it actually had a good story to it yeah. and so I definitely want to revisit that mm -hmm. and next up is one is that's an obvious pick I don't know why I put it at the bottom of this list but it's love actually and they're not in any order yeah I mean, Love Actually is definitely one I can understand, like, the criticisms behind it, where mm -hmm. it's like, people absolutely love this movie, and I get why. And then there's people who are like, I absolutely loathe this movie, and I understand why. Right. <laughs> because there's some really sad stories in this movie. Mm -hmm. Like, the one girl who was, um, she was, like, now famous from Ozark, but, like, her story where she was, like, obsessed with her one coworker and in love with him, and then she couldn't be with him because she just had a brother who was in a mental hospital. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but it's like he, she was interrupted and had to leave to go to him one night. Mm -hmm. But it's like, how does that make you guys not end up together? <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like, you guys can still be together. Yeah. You just have to realize like, hey, this is what you're kind of getting into mm -hmm. if we pursue a relationship, you know? And honestly, my favorite story is the one of about, um, what is it, the, the like aging rock star and his oh, manager. Yeah. Like to me, that was the best love story of the whole movie was him yeah. and his manager. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Yeah, just watch it. You got to dedicate some time because that's another longer one, but mm -hmm. it's good. Yeah. The next one's all you. Oh, okay. So this one's a little like on the spooky side. Mm -hmm. um, this is one that I'm not sure where you could find it, honestly. We just watched it, I think, mm -hmm. on Hulu on a whim. Um, but it's called I Trapped the Devil. And the story of the movie itself is not, like, a Christmas plot. No. But everything that happens in the movie is, like, Chris, like close to Christmas Day or, like, Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. But pretty much it's about a guy who is, like, extremely paranoid and he believes he has literally trapped the devil incarnate himself mm -hmm. in his basement yeah. in this like trap door and like has family over for christmas but like no one believes yeah. him and like i remember enjoying this i would say the only thing i didn't care about in the movie was how it wrapped up it was kind of anticlimactic to me but Is every the devil in there Yes. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember. But, but just like everything leading up to it was very good. And I remember looking <laughs> at what? Yes. Yes. He was. Like, I remember like on, being on IMDb and this had like a really low rating. And I was like, and I remember watching and I was like, where is this low rating coming from? Me. 
Oh, just you. Just me. Just you. Okay. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. But yeah, it, it's one of those. It's like, it's kind of an anticlimactic ending. But if you want something, you're like, I just want a holiday movie that I've never seen before. Maybe you may like I Trapped the Devil. Yeah. The concept of it was really cool. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like, I mean, there is some definitely eerie moments in that movie. Like where he's just talking to the door and then the voice behind the door. And, you know, but like yeah. once... Oh my god, I just remembered that. You did? It was creepy. Yeah, but it's like once, like, you find out, like, everything is getting answered for you, you're like, oh, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I, that aspect of it I loved. Yeah. So. Oh no, I'm the one that put this one on the list, and I don't really remember a lot about it, but you, I know I loved it. You loved it. You love aliens. Yeah, it's called Alien. <coughs> <laughs> <coughs> okay? Sorry, I just choked on my cider. It's called Alien Christmas or Xmas, mm -hmm. and it's on Netflix. It's made for children. Yeah. Uh, but I don't remember. I just know it was like aliens making Christmas happen. It was, yeah, it was pretty much, um, it was like the length of an episode of a TV show. It wasn't like a full length movie, mm -mm. but it was about an alien who like his race was like wanting to invade earth and he was the only like alien that like discovered christmas and santa claus and everything and okay. part of it does involve an invasion but he this little you know alien who could you know just Aww. basically tried to save christmas and okay thank you you did a much better job at that that's what i remember i'm like yeah an alien made christmas happen that's what i said <laughs> <laughs> that's okay Oh, whatever. It was good. It's cute. If you have a couple minutes, check it out on, on Netflix. Especially if you have kids, they'll love it. Yeah. Speaking of cute, Charlie Brown Christmas. Love Cannot it. go wrong. Love it. Yeah. It's amazing. Classic. I, yeah, moving on. Inside. Inside. Have you seen it? Because you should. <sighs> I watched it when I was like 12. I'm shocked you watched this movie when you were 12. I shouldn't have, because it's pretty disturbing. Especially if you're pregnant. Yeah. I well, mean, it makes me want to watch it more. Yeah, that's the thing <laughs> is like, that's the funny thing about Kelly is like, you can mention something about like, oh, if you're about to go on a cruise ship, don't watch Titanic. Kelly would be like, I'm watching it and I'm going on that cruise tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll watch it on the cruise. Yeah, Inside has to do with a pregnant woman on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And it is a home invasion movie mm -hmm. and it is really brutal. Yeah. It's very disturbing. So it's not for the faint of heart. Those who dare watch it. Mm -hmm. It is good. It actually and, is a good movie. Yeah, and but it's, it's it is, about what you think it's about. Yeah, it is brutal though. Chum, chum, chum. Yeah, so prepare for brutality if yeah. you want to watch yeah. that. It's not very feel good. It's it's not, but it's entertaining. It is very entertaining and it's a good movie. And yeah. you know, if you want the hardcore extreme, you know, part of you fulfilled, and that may help you. Yeah. I actually, the reason I saw this at such a young age is because my mom would buy those blockbuster, like, I don't know, like they would like put them out for sale for really cheap. Mm -hmm. And so like, we still have like the DVD from blockbuster that like has the sticker like $3.99 on it or whatever. And so she would just bring them home and she didn't watch them. She just oh, bought them for yeah, us. Yeah, watch this one called Inside. So I remember putting it on and being like, I'm sure I was freaked out, but I was in for the ride, so. Yeah, it's a good one, though. Yeah. Pottersville is the movie we were watching last night. Yes, it is a terrible movie. It's not that terrible. I think it's a terrible movie. It's a bad movie that I like. Yeah, it, I don't think it's bad, though, in my opinion. And this is... This is another it's one of those, if you, funny. yeah, this is another one that it's like, if you want something a little different, a little off the beaten mm -hmm. path, you may mm -hmm. like it. Um, but it has Michael Shannon of all people in it. And he's usually known as a very serious looking guy, very serious actor, but he owns like this general store, Judy Greer's in it. And they're in like a town. They're in a town, a super small town where nothing happens. And you know, Michael Shannon's character, he goes home one day to surprise his wife for a nice dinner, finds out that she's like a furry and was like kind of almost like having an affair with, you know, the police officer of the town. Mm -hmm. They're both furries. And so, 
Um, he gets drunk one night because he's upset, and then he runs around town dressed up as a Sasquatch. And then everyone <laughs> believes that a Sasquatch really ran through town. And a lot of people are like, what does this have to do with Christmas? It all takes place during Christmas. There's Christmas songs throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. There's snow everywhere. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it is... It is quite the bonkers movie, but yeah, it's, it, it's got a little bit of a charm to it. It, it definitely does. Yeah, and it is cool <laughs> to see. I like Michael Shannon a lot as an actor, mm -hmm. and just seeing him in a, in a different light as just being like this nice guy, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. I think that he is probably like one of the main reasons I like the movie. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just, I can't see anyone else like pulling it off and like making it decent. Yeah. Because it is pretty goofy. Yeah, it's a very I would say goofy it's movie. like low budget ish. I mean, it's a good looking movie. It's just, yeah, you could tell that they probably made this on a shoestring budget. They shot yeah. in like four different places mm -hmm. in this small town. Yeah. And, but yeah. But he's just such a sweet guy, and you just like grow to like him a lot and want him to like be happy. Yeah, he definitely plays just like your just average person that just, you know, works at a general store mm -hmm. and like you know he's not over the top or anything besides when he gets you know loaded in the one night when right. he dresses up as a sasquatch but you realize that he's a he's a really caring person and like he realizes that you know even this stupid prank and antic thing he did is causing a lot of like you know excitement around town and then he realizes like wow you know uh, this put our town on the map and people are mm -hmm. actually wanting to come visit us mm -hmm. and you know so, and it's got, you know, a sweet little, you know, Christmas sentimental message yeah. at the end, usually. So, yeah, it's an enjoyable mm -hmm. one. I would say technically that is the last one, but um, the last one isn't necessarily a Christmas movie, but it is a winter movie. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Did I put this on the list? Maybe. I probably did. But then again, I love Edward Scissorhands. So, whatever. So, it's not bad to put it on here. Yeah, it's not bad to watch around Christmas time anyways. Yeah. Because it's, you know, all about ice sculptures and snow and the ice dance. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. So. It works. Yeah, I love Edward Scissorhands. It's a great movie. Mm -hmm. And I have nothing left. I'm spent. Yeah, that's, that was a lot. Yeah. So, to those who watched to the end, thank you, and also, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I hope that we gave you some good ideas for movies to watch, because we're constantly, like, I pulled this list out last night, because I'm like, what should we watch tonight? I want to watch a holiday movie, but I don't know what to watch, because, as you mentioned, with streaming, there's so much to choose, choose from that it feels like you don't know what to pick. So, yep. hopefully this helps you. Yeah. Overexposure. It just makes you want to watch nothing. Yeah. So, definitely. But I guess, uh, you know, just as a Christmas message, and to those who tuned into Love Bats this year, thank you very much for watching any of our videos yeah. and giving us thumbs up and commenting. Or if we provided any sort of enjoyment to mm -hmm. your day or anything like that, we greatly appreciate yes, it. Yes, definitely. And with, you know, a plus one on the way in the next few months, you know with this channel we're not really sure you know how our pacing of videos will be going yeah this is our first kid so we don't really know what we're in for we're gonna be busy <laughs> you know obviously yeah. with that so i mean we're never you know people who are you know we're not posting like f four videos a week mm -hmm. you know we both work full-time jobs you know this is just a thing that's for fun mm -hmm. and but but it is important for us to keep it up so we will continue bringing content. I guess we're just saying, we just don't know what that's gonna look like in these next couple of months. And we're definitely not like a, we're not gonna have like a family YouTube where we include videos of our kid and stuff. That's just like not what we're yeah. into, so. It's, yeah, I would, we were saying that, you yeah. know, that we're, you know, this is just for fun and, mm -hmm. you know, we, we want some part of ourselves to remain private, yeah. you know, and cause, Outside of Love Bats on YouTube, I mean, I'm a pretty private person. I don't mm -hmm. really talk about a lot of my business. Yeah. And, I mean, not that you really want to know. I'm like the most boring person ever. I disagree. Like, I just play Guitar Hero and <laughs> write silly music mm -hmm. when I'm not doing this. I mean, and what then, the heck do I'm I do? At, yeah, and I'm at work and then you're watching things on Casey Anthony and True Crime. Yeah. 
You should do a true crime series. I don't like that. I mean, I like watching them. I don't want to make it. True. But you know your stuff way more than I do on the true crime stuff. Yeah, it's my thing. Yeah. But so thanks for watching this whole video. Thank you all for watching and give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you would like. We would greatly appreciate the subscriptions. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just share around with your friends if you they're like, I don't know what to watch for the holiday season. I've watched the Christmas story 18,000 times. <laughs> then you can be like, well, watch uh, Inside. You might like it. <laughs> it's quite the feel good movie, yeah, Shay. Uh huh, exactly. So, all right, I'm going to stop being awkward and we're going to go. What are we going to do? Uh, heat up my cider. That sounds good. Okay. We're gonna go heat up Kelly's cider. We'll be gone the next three years. What? I'm just kidding. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. I randomly put on a glove. Merry Christmas. Bye. <laughs> Why'd you put on a glove? I don't know. It was just sitting here. You put it on. All right, everyone. Merry Christmas, Hanukkah. Peace. <laughs>